Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, I, you are hearing Miss Miglabite in the background. Miglabite, absolutely wonderful person. You should go watch her. Um, and so, sorry about the uh, delays. We are waiting, uh, Miss, for some very dumb reason, um, Miglabite is is going to actually. Um, I am ready. Sorry, I don't, you can't hear that, can you? Okay, um, so I was going to do this uh, originally as this is sort of a, well, I'll wait till people get here. Here we are. Hello, hello, hello. We have 15 people coming in. I will now start seeing the stuff. Hello, hello, hello. We oh, have shit. Hang on. In. I need to turn myself off. The okay. There, I actually was turning myself. I wasn't turning myself on. I meant I had the uh, stream on, so I heard myself echo. But I'm good now. Hello, Dank. I remember you. I remember all you wonderful people. And honestly, um, I do have a whole list. And. Um, Honestly, I was not expecting to do this with people here, so it's going to be a little bit different than I'd planned. Uh, you can tell that my, my list is really important because it's all in capital letters. Um, so, so this is going to, this is going to, um, by the way, the most important lesson to take away is that Miglobite is wonderful. You should go watch her. In fact, I would recommend right now you go watch some of her older streams instead of watching me, because this is really going to be... Um, not te technically, I believe what I'm saying, but it's going to be very, um, it's going to probably trigger some people, to be honest. Uh, okay, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that, that's a good cry or a bad cry. Um, but okay, I guess we'll get started. So the, the, the main sites we're going to go to are uh, the ones that pretty much everyone, um, everyone has been going to. One, of course, one is the population clock. And the other is the one that uh, you know everyone's using for the uh, the count of the coronavirus, uh, which is this one here. Ah, and if I remember how to select in, um, so what I'm going to try to do here, and I'm sure I'm going to get heckled to death, but but let's go with it. Um, okay. Oh, bad cry. Oh. Don't listen to him. We're here for the truth. Yeah, this is really, I mean, I'm, this is really bad. I almost feel bad doing this because I do believe this, but it's going to be, um, it's going to sound very much like I'm, I'm taking this too non-seriously. Okay, so the first point I was going to make is this is the U.S. and world population, about 329 million people in the U.S., 7.6 billion people in the world. The coronavirus has currently affected... Uh, killed 16,000 people uh, and 101,000 have recovered and there's a few still in, in still in progress. 16,000 is not a huge number of people. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, is not a huge number of people compared to the number of people in the world. In fact, it's not even a huge number compared to the number of people in the world who die on a daily basis from other causes. In fact, now that I'm going to probably not be able to find it that I want it. Um, so if you go over here to the top 10 causes of death in the United States, you'll see that today, even today, coronavirus will, would not have made this list. Um, so heart disease, you know, that cancer, um, unintentional injuries, chronic lower respiratory disease, uh, but one of the more interesting ones on this list is um, is influenza itself. 55,000 people killed in the year 2017 by influenza. It's 2% of the, all the deaths. Um, currently, uh, the number of... And this is, this is in the United States alone. Only in the United States. So let's see what people are saying here. Yes, you know what? <laughs> um, where do I have that? Uh, yeah. 
that that is going to be my next point actually the the cons literally i was going to write that sentence down if i was going to write this down it is the exponential uh, growth um and you're correct it's only been in the states for a couple of weeks uh, not very long but let's take a look at in the states how many people it's killed um I mean, it seems scary, but, um, and let's see, da, 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 da. 501 people in, you know, even if we said that's a week, um, well, let's see, that would be 25,000 people in the year, and I forgot what this number was. Yeah, see, the problem is, even if you look at the linear rate right now, it still would be lower than the 10th lowest cause of death, and that, you know much, much lower than heart disease, cancer, and all this other stuff. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, and you're right, you're right. It has only been in there for a couple of weeks. But here's, here's where I'm seeing the, let's see, let's go back over here. Um, by the way, there is, this is something I pointed out in a previous stream. I'm a little bit unhappy about the fact that this makes it look like the USA is the third most infected country. Um, and the reason for that is they actually have a much better, um, they might have a much better statistic over here that no one looks at. The U.S. has a very large population compared to other countries, not compared to China, but compared to a lot of other countries. If you do this total cases per million population, you can see that, you know, it's l much less panicky. We're not, we're not nearly as percentage wise infected as, you know, it would look from the totals. And I think I see we're way down here. And the other problem is, and I, again, this is just a this is sort of a rant. If you look at the um, the U.S. states, um, the, some of the maps people are printing out for U.S. states coronavirus, you'll see that they're using total numbers. Um, so let's see if someone. Well, I don't know if I can find it, but there was this map that based. Oh, here it is, state by state breakdown. They were using total numbers, which is, again, not really fair because it makes it look like, come on, where's the freaking map? Okay, this is actually a better map. But I was seeing a map where they basically were counting the total number of uh, virus uh, infections. And um, and and uh, New York, of course, looked very sick, but that's because New York has a lot more people uh, than, for example, New Mexico. So, again, I think... Um, total numbers as in... I'm sorry, what did I say that was was uh total numbers uh, sorry i don't i don't know um i'll go on to my next point but if you want to clarify migla i will definitely answer your questions um okay so now that i've kind of whined about how some of these sites are making the u.s look more infected than it is you do have to remember we have a much larger we have one of the world's largest populations not the largest china has that but we're, we're up there, so it's, it's not like the total number of cases is as good of an indicator um, as the percentage of cases. So, so now, I, I, I sound nervous because I do have the virus myself, and I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Um... Okay, um, I kind of forgot what the hell I was talking about. Uh, oh, you mean like over here? Well, the total deaths are the people who have, who have, you know, the total number of people who've died. Um, and we are, we appear to be pretty high on that, but it's because we have a really large population. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry, I think, I, I think I'm talking too fast, not that I, which is something I always do. Um... And this site here does, sorry, God damn it. Uh, it does also include the total recovered and so forth. Um, okay, I'm really, really sorry uh, that I, I am probably going way too fast. I'll try to keep up with chat better. Um, and that, that's cool, that's please. Please keep me honest, or if you can, if I don't run away with it. <laughs> okay, now as someone else said, and honestly I was gonna literally quote that phrase if I was gonna write this down, the, the concern is more that it's growing exponentially, except that it's not. The problem is in virtually every country, go faster, in virtually every country what we see is exponential growth at first, but then it levels off. And again, you might say, well, that's because they take measures against it, but 
I don't know about that. And and um, and this is where I'm going to make the the allegory of the David party example. In case you're wondering how that got there. So let's say a guy named David starts his own political party. Uh, you know, day one he's got one person. Next day he convinces another person. Day after that he convinces two other people. Day after that he convinces four other people. So you could say, looking at David's, uh, you know, how many people belong to David's party, one, two, four, eight, it's doubling every day. But if you made a prediction based on that, it probably wouldn't be correct. Um, because exponential growth is usually not sustainable. Um, and again, you know, when you first hit the, you know, and this is when you also divide small numbers. Um, so, you know, you have, you know, and, and I know what you're saying. Hey, every life is important. You can't say these are small numbers. But, but really, 501 people in the entire United States of 300 million people, that is a small number. Th these are still very, very small numbers um, compared to the, the population. So we're not, we're not really, and if you look at the, um, if you look at the growth rate here, it does kind of look a little exponential, but it's, see, one, one issue here is, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, oh, wow, 14% deaths. Okay, now, I wanted to look at the logarithmic graph, hang on. Um, because what you see here is, okay, uh, somewhere I've got this. Either they changed it or I just don't, I thought there was a log graph. Oh, here we are. Um, and this is a log graph? I think so it is, yeah. Um, it flattened out quite a bit, and now it's hitting new countries. It's going up again. That's cool. But what I'm saying is I don't think it's going to keep going up like this on a exponential scale. Hello, ISO Opto... Let's see. Um, uh, coming across someone with no limbs. It is, it is very, very a low percentage right now. Um, you have it, ISO Opto later. Uh, you're the one who lives in the same city as I do, don't, doesn't it? Yeah, the flattening the curve. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is the precautions we're taking are excessive. And because I believe that the exponential growth we're seeing, that does happen at first. It happened in China. But I'm saying that <laughs> I saw Optilator, wonderful person, lives in Albuquerque, fortunately does not know where I live. Uh, if you've watched previous streams, you might know where he lives because we actually helped him apartment hunt in a uh, previous stream. Uh, so, but now he's got um, coronavirus, so you probably don't want to go visit him. Um, shit. Uh, crap. Well, that's not good. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to move. Uh, well, do you want to... Do you want to private message it to me or... Just to prove that you know it. I don't know if I want to know that you know it, but but anyway. Um, great. I'm going to have to move now or insulate the house against coronavirus. Um, okay. Usually I would walk around now for Pomodoro, but I'm way too hyped up about this. So I'm going to keep talking. Um, so I'm not going to walk around like my thing says. So, so th this is what I'm saying is when you see exponential growth... Um, you shouldn't assume it's going to continue to be exponential. Uh, isn't it wonderful? Uh, oh, well, darn. Um, I think if you actually are tested and uh, uh, become sick, um, well, okay, now this is, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. I think we're undercounting something else that's important too. Um, by the way, if you do get sick, if you get tested and you're confirmed sick, you will be the first case in the city of Albuquerque. Okay, okay, let me answer this. Okay, since we're doing this, let me answer that question first. Um, there are a number of people who will get the coronavirus, never have serious enough symptoms to take a test for it, and then recover from it uh, without ever having being tested. Um, like they might just think they have the flu, they might not have a strong enough fever to be tested. Uh, and I believe by not counting those people, those people are never going to show up in these statistics because they're never going to be tested. Um, what? I, there were three cases in New Mexico the last time I checked and none of them were here. Oh crap. 
Um, stop, stop defeating my point by making me scared locally. Yeah, it changes all the time, I know. Um, but it was, maybe, maybe I'm wrong now, because it, it is growing pretty fast. Um, but what I'm saying is those people who um, get it, don't get tested, and recover will not be counted here. And I think it's a large number of people, and let me explain why I think it's a large number of people, at least give some evidence for why it is. Um, let's see. Yeah, Corona can't wait, it's too late. Haha, <laughs> that rhymed. Um, now, the coronavirus has a two-day incubation period. Uh, also, after the first cases were discovered in the United States, uh, you know, states did react, but they took their time. I mean, some kids st still came to school the next day. Uh, people still came to, uh, you know, work the next day. The, there was like a several days delay before we started really shutting everything down. So my point would be, it's too late, really. It, it, if, if it was there and it was there for two days and no one noticed it, it's probably spread a lot wider than we think. Um, sorry, did I say two day? Okay, well, let's find out. Um, I, I think I meant minimum of two days. One of the nice things is with the coronavirus, everything just com auto completes to that. Um, okay. How long is the incubation period? Okay. Well, that actually helps my point. Um, yeah, 2 to 14 days. You're right. Um, well, here's the problem, though. Um, it has. Um, yes. I, I'm certainly not saying, you know, there will be no new coronavirus cases. But I'm saying this is not, um, this is not as big a pandemic as we think. I don't think it's going to kill off 10% of the population or 14% or whatever. And there's many reasons I think that. But this actually helps my case. So if there's a two to 14 day incubation period and we took days to respond to this, there's a lot of people out there who were infected. I mean, if you accept that this is a very, you know, virulently tra transmitted disease, I think there's a lot of people out there. It's too late. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not, honestly, I don't see how 50 people versus 51 people is really going to help. Um, so, I mean, our reaction was late, which some people say is bad, but it also means that if this thing is really as infectious as people say, there are tons of people who right now have this uh, disease. Okay, and that, that would, that's actually what I'm saying. It's not really as deadly as... Um, um, well, what I'm saying is because what's going to happen is a lot of these people have already or will recover without um, normal curve? You mean like the normal distribution? Um, yes, but, but what I'm saying is it's too late for that. Um, yeah, but it's already too... What I'm saying is you're not going to save more people from getting infected because if this thing is as virulent as we think it is and we didn't catch it for several days, a lot of people have it and a lot of them, um, a lot of them are going to get better without having symptoms. In fact, uh, God, I wish I had a source for this. Early on, um, the CDC was even saying most people who contract the virus will have mild symptoms and get over it. So it's, it's I guess the, the, the panic that some people are looking at is uh, this number, which has gotten worse. Oh, come on, show statistics. Okay. Okay, hang on one more. Are looking at this number here where we're saying, well, 14% of the people are going to die. But that's only 14% of the people who um, have it serious enough that they go to a hospital for it. Um, it is not 14% of the whole population. Um, um, yeah, but what I'm saying is, let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that basically the problem here is um, it's, it's really too late to do all of that. Uh, a lot of people currently have it. It's an incubation. Uh, or, I mean, some people will, will be naturally immune. I mean, that, that's just a thing. 
but it could be an incubation for these people. Um, but it but it isn't because it's too late now. Is what I'm saying. I'm saying that people are going to get sick now in the next few days. People who are going staying home, whatever they're doing, it's too late. They're going to get sick anyway. They've caught it already. Um, weren't yeah, but what I'm saying is it's we're we're at a very high percentage already. Um, and and here's here's okay here's my point in terms of that they will be. Um, they will be. I mean, if, well, okay. What we don't know about the coronavirus is how infectious, how many people, um, well, okay, you're making an interesting point here. Uh, let's, let's actually look at some numbers here. Um, cause I, cause I know what you're saying. Um, so I think Italy has the worst, uh, the worst death rate right now. In fact, I think it just became and, uh, well, actually, let's look at the, well, okay, let's see. So 63,000 people in Italy are infected. So I think the point you're making, oh, I'm sorry, I'm saying the percentage of people who are infected but do not have symptoms yet uh, or will never develop serious symptoms is high. Um, so what, what I'm there's a difference between people who are infected and people who are tested and found to be infected. I get the feeling a lot of people, because the symptoms are mild and because there's an incubation period, might already have it, not know they have it, and never know they have it unless people panic and start, you know, every time they have a sniffle, they start testing. That could be a problem. But if, you know, people say, well, I don't have, a, you know, I don't have a fever or anything, uh, I just, it's just a cold or a flu, they'll get over it, then they'll never be tested. Um, well, okay, my, it, it, it's not wishful thinking, it's more a question of, uh, look, at how much, look at how much time passed between when we saw the first case in the United States and people got serious about doing lockdown stuff. Um, and we know there's already a two to 14 day incubation period. Um, it's, it's here. It's, it, you know, it, 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 the coronavirus is not waiting for us to shut things down. I mean, if, if someone has it, they've spread it. And they might not even know they have it. And we have these large gatherings before we started shutting stuff down. Um, so I think, it, and this is actually a thing I was going to suggest. Um, um, let, let me... Let, what I was going to suggest, what would be really good to have when we, when we have the facilities to do it, is to randomly test volunteers in the population and see how many of them had the coronavirus, got over it, but never got tested because they never felt their symptoms were strong enough. And I think that would give us some good idea of, oh, actually, you know, a lot of the people got it, got over it. So, so the, the, um, um, if 10% of the people got it before shutdown, uh, well, okay. Um, okay, I guess maybe my um, my approach to this is a little different. I'm treating it like the flu. We don't usually shut things down because of the flu. The flu is less infectious slightly, but not a lot less infectious. Um, what basically happens with the flu is everyone gets it or you know the people who aren't already immune get it they get sick they stay home when they're sick they come back to work um the people who are um you know and and as we saw at the uh, in this other uh, graph in this other page 2.4 percent of the people will die from the flu i mean there is there is a death rate associated with the flu as well um yeah, yes, but what I'm saying, it's like what I'm arguing is it's like the flu. I, I don't think we can mitigate it. I mean, if we wanted to shut down the country every time there was a flu virus out, this would be analogous to doing that uh, because um, I think people are over-focusing on, they're saying, oh, look how many people have died from it. No, not that many people have died from it. Look how many people are going to die from it. And again, I don't think that many people are going to die from it. I just think, um, 
Uh, let's see. Well, but it's like if literally nobody had any immunity. To f um. Okay. Well, that's. I don't think it does though. I know you're looking at the graph that says there's a um, there's a 14%. Uh, let me find this again. I really didn't expect to do this challenge, but this is fun. Um, let's see. Coronavirus. So the number of people that are kind of panicking about, and this is getting higher actually, is you're saying, hey, there's 14% deaths. It's going to kill 14% of the population uh, who get it. Uh, but the answer to this is there's two reasons this number is high. One is people who die from the coronavirus will die from it sooner than people who recover from the coronavirus. So there's always a lag time for recovery. And we can actually see that if, if you believe this statistic, which says of the people who have it currently, only 5% are in critical condition, not 14%. So it's just a question of people who die from it die sooner. So this number is going to have uh, a, a number is going to get bigger faster sooner than the uh, than they are recovered or discharged from it. Um, oh wow! Thank you, Miglobite. That's very nice. Um, okay, I guess you're making a different point than I am. The point I'm making uh, I, the point I am making is that I've heard some people say, uh, you know, 10% of the population is going to die from it. And uh, what I'm saying is, for two reasons, that's not true. One, because this number is not representative. And even this number isn't, because what I'm saying is, there's a lot of people who get it, get over it, and never get tested. So this only reflects the number of people who have it seriously enough that they have to go to a hospital or some, some facility. I mean, I would say, I find it very hard to believe that in the entire world, given how virulent this thing's supposed to be, how fast it spreads, I, don't, I think there's more than the 372,000 cases out of 7.5 billion people. Um, so some of these people obviously just don't have the facilities to get to a hospital, but, but a lot of them, I think, just, just get over it, basically. It, it is, even the CDC agrees, most people will only have mild symptoms and probably won't, you know, if they're smart, they won't even get tested because they will never be, you know, they will never have the symptoms uh, seriously enough to be tested. But let's see what people are saying. Um, yes, that is what I'm saying exactly, Miglobite. Uh, I think people are panicking over the top because the numbers, and it's mostly because people are saying exponential growth. And if that were true, it would really be bad. Uh, but exponential growth, I'm saying, is not happening. Uh, it happens at first, and it's it's kind of reflective of a lot of things that have very small numbers. I mean, and and you know, um, I, I hate to make the example of the Libertarian Party because I I, fa I favor their views, but you know they say they're the fastest growing party in America, which is probably true, but that just means they don't have a lot of people. Um, very big parties like the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, they struggle to keep their numbers. They struggle not to have a loss. Pepsi and Coke in the soft drink market, you know, for them, keeping their numbers is hard. So again, this massive growth that we're seeing is not representative, is my claim. 1% um, of people, it could be too... Eh, man. Okay, and I know what you're saying, okay, but damn, get wrecked with return. Um, well, see, what I'm saying is, though, I think this is going to kill uh, one to two percent. That's still a lot, actually, because um, one to two percent would be like three to six million people in the United States. <laughs> um, I, I think it's going to be lower than that, because we don't know. The big number, the big unknown is how many people get it, but never, ever get tested and never ever go to a hospital for it. And if there's a whole bunch of those people, then these numbers, I mean, if we look, I don't have a graph for China, but if we look at that, what happens is the numbers go up because, you know, it's new, it's, you know, it's, it's basically because people are getting tested and, and then it's gonna, it's gonna flatten out. I think in two weeks, we're gonna see that this was serious overkill. Um, 
because my okay my point for people not staying home um, is because I think this is like the flu okay but that's problematic because right now okay I, I, I know I'm cheating when I say this so you can respond here but there's 16,313 deaths maybe we can expect another 5% of this number which would be like 14 maybe 30,000 deaths total based on who's in you know sick right now 30,000 people dying out of a world population of seven and a half billion is very small yes I'm cheating um, because I realize these numbers are not final with these numbers will increase in fact if I reload this page these numbers will increase oh they didn't they usually do um, so I guess I saw Optilator my question would be um, I mean, if you look at the percentage of people who get extremely ill, it's really, really low unless I'm missing something. I mean, right, I mean, we agreed this is the number of people who have gone to hospital for the coronavirus out of a world population of seven and a half billion people. Or am I missing something? Um, no, I agree, I agree. It, it does spread more widely than the flu, but what I'm saying, but oddly enough, that's a point in my favor because it means most people probably, probably already have it. It's too late to stop it. You are correct in saying it is dangerous for the elderly and immunocompromised, but so is the flu. The flu is also dangerous to old people. Um, okay, and that, that might be true. Yeah, okay, you're, in other words, you're saying that we want to sort of build the cases over a, over a period of months. Um, you have brought up a good point. Uh, I was just saying the total number of deaths, um, by any measure right now, that, you, that we actually have a number for, the, the percentage of people who are getting very ill from it is very small. I mean... Well, that actually would be that that actually might be a useful useful goal. But but I guess let me ask you this question. Are you I mean this number is definitely under reporting. There's definitely other people who've gotten seriously ill who aren't showing up in this number. But if you want to talk about percentages, what percentage of people do you think um, will get seriously ill? I mean, if, you know, it could be US population or the world population. Do you think will get seriously ill from this virus? And what do you base that on? I mean, China had like 40,000 deaths. They've got like 2 billion people in there, though. This is like fewer than the number of regular deaths in an hour. Oh, okay. And what are you basing that on? And by seriously ill, do we mean that they will... Um, skipping Pomodoro again, it's about to come up. And I see, I, I just don't see that number. I mean, I see that three to four. Okay, sorry. We have to decide what we mean when we say, when you say seriously ill, do you mean that they go to a hospital and become one of these people? Or do you mean death, they die? And, and, I, and I just don't see why that number would be true because right now, okay. So you're th saying that three to 4% this number will one day grow to be three to four percent of seven billion, uh, which is uh, f f like 100, uh, 210 to 280 million people. You believe this number will go to 210, 200. Oh, so what is your basis for that claim, given that right now we're at 372,000, which is less than, you know, a very, very small part of that? And I'm going to ignore the Pomodoro. Like I said, why is it one minute, 12 seconds behind? I need to figure that out. Um, and I guess that's my question. How do, you, how do you see that number happening? Um, given that right now there's only 372,000 people. And I do agree this number will get bigger. That's not, a, that's not a question. But I guess what I'm saying is I don't see it getting as big as you think it's going to get. 
I mean, the, the number we need is how many people are getting it, getting over it, never actually going to a hospital. Um, well, that's the, that's the other problem. You can always argue uh, that, um, that the, the, the reason it's slowing down is because of the measures as opposed to it was too slow for the measures to be taken in the first place. Okay. Um, again, and I, what I'm saying megalobite is we did it too late because the virus is very infectious. We took several days to do it and it has an incubation period. I mean, our actions are like 15 days too late. Um, yeah, what, what I'm asking you is why you think two to 4% of the people will need serious care. I mean, let's go, let's go to Italy, which is the hot spot for this thing. Um, so Italy has had, let's see, 63,927 cases. And I don't happen to know the, po well, actually I could probably just Google that. Uh, population of Italy. Which I think is 60.48 million. So unless I'm missing something, this is about a thousandth of the population. This is 0.1% of their population has so far. And I realize the number is going to go up a little bit. Um, okay. Well, okay. I, I mean, yes, that's what I've heard. Um, but I, so that is, so we're saying that 0.1% uh, and that is Italy, and that is the extreme number, so we do have to be careful about the fact. Yeah, that's, see, this is, I mean, I guess the, the point I'm making is compare this to influenza. Compare this to the reaction we take when, when there's, an inf there's a flu virus. What I'm saying is we don't need to take stronger measures because the flu virus basically acts like this too. Um... Okay, so, so earlier you were using the number 0.5%, um, but not for everyone. People still die from the flu. I mean, if an old person gets it, there's no guarantee that they're going to, you know, antivirals are only so effective. The vaccine is a good thing. That means people can, you know, avoid getting it. And that's nice. But, um, but again, I, I guess, okay. But that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's not what's happening here. How many people are getting corona? If you look at the numbers, how many? I mean, it's not a lot. Or, or okay, I have to be careful how I say this. But it, but it isn't. I mean, the people who have serious cases, um, and, okay, so I guess I could also say, I mean, the cold is milder than the flu, so I probably shouldn't make that comparison. Um, no, okay, you're correct, maybe, everyone could get this, but that's not what we're worried about, right? We're worried about the people who get it seriously enough to actually go to a hospital and become part of that number of, you know, I wouldn't agree with that. Seasonal flu, um, I, I don't think I agree with that. Seasonal flu is, it mutates... Um, that's why you have to have a f new flu vaccine every year. I mean, you, you, you realize you have to get vaccinated for the flu every flu season because um, the flu virus mutates. I mean, they call it influenza strain A and strain B, but like the rhinovirus, like the cold, there's, it actually mutates. There's a lot of them out there. I don't. Well, you're supposed to get the, a new flu, vi a new flu in, uh, vaccine every year if you're old, like, like I am. Yeah, exactly. The it's just um, yeah, it's it's basically that they it's the best effort, and and actually in some places they recommend only old people get it or people who are going to be more vulnerable. Uh, for everyone else, yeah, for everyone else, you just get the damn flu. Um, see, I don't say that's necessarily. Thank you. Uh, I don't say that's necessarily true though. Um, it, it's not a question of immunity. Uh, because again, we're not we're not immune to it. 
uh, but more a question of seriousness, of how, how much it's going to impact our lives. Um, I'm saying most people can get it, go back, you know, be sick for a couple of days, go back to work, and, um, and, and just, like, just like with the flu. It's, and yes, there will be people who get sick seriously, I, I, you know, but what I'm saying is that even with, even with the, um, okay, well, then what happens is, well, yeah, then what happens is uh, a lot of people are going to get sick-ish, mildly, um, then they'll get over it. So they might place a run on like cold medications, uh, you know, symptomatic medications, ones that don't cure anything, but make you feel better when you're sick. So I guess that could be a problem. Um, but what I'm saying is that, you know, give it two weeks, everyone's going to be over it. We go back to normal. And the, the, the sort of spreading it out is probably not a good idea. Um, it's, it's just basically, because, you know, during flu season, a lot of people get the flu. And, they, you know, they're out of the office, come back, they get sick, you know, they, they recover, they come back. And that, that is what I'm saying. I'm saying based on the current numbers, um, I think the people who are saying this is going to get huge are basing it on an exponential increase. Okay. Um, <sighs> the only problem with that, I saw up the later, is could we make the same argument for the flu? Suppose we decided to shut everything down when there was a flu. Clearly, fewer people will die. Um, but, you know, and I hate to, I'm not saying that their lives are worthless or, you know, worth less than anybody else's lives, but we have to kind of decide um, how much more seriously are we going to take the coronavirus than the flu virus, given that at this time, the coronavirus has isn't even close to the flu in terms of uh, numbers. Um, and we don't have... Um, yeah, I... Oh, that's that's also true. That is a good point. Not not everybody goes to the hospital for a flu, so those numbers might be uh, inflated as well. Um, I'm going to make some more points now. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find this. Uh, as always, I don't prepare, but usually it doesn't matter because I'm just talking to myself. Um, okay, so this is the historical way I look at it, because I'm freaking old and I was alive when this happened. Um, one death, hospitalized 13, and last to a last mass immunization program, but the vaccine was in, associated with an increase of reports of Guillain-Barr syndrome, paralysis, respiratory arrest, and death. Basically, if I remember this correctly, um, and again, this is Wikipedia. You don't have to believe everything they say. Um, the swine flu affair fails to tell us whether, in the face of scientific uncertainty, it is better to err on the side of caution or aggressive intervention. There is not even complete argument about the causal relation between the swine flu vaccine and the Guillain-Barr syndrome, as noted in blah, blah, blah. Um... So this is this is what I'm saying. I'm saying there's definitely a point to be made that overreaction is not the correct reaction here. Um, okay, yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, that's actually, that's an interesting looking pyramid there. Okay. Um. Okay. I guess the point I'm going to make here is, um. <laughs> this is still programming, damn it, Milk Mu, but mostly it's because Miglobite raided me and she provided me with some wonderful, wonderful people. 
who uh, show up here. And they do like arguing with me. Um, and which is kind of cool, because I'm the only one who's allowed to talk. So it's like, <laughs> it's like I have the power. Um, and, oh, you, you didn't come in from the raid. You came in separately. Cool. Um, you're, you're, you're stalking me, aren't you? You're like right behind my house right now, just waiting to skis on me. Um, yeah, I know, I know. And that is, that is ironic. Yes. Um, but, but that, that is actually part of a, something else I believe, which is it's very easy to fight for things that will benefit you personally. It's a lot more difficult to fight for things that will perhaps, um, actually harm your lifestyle. I mean, I remember when condominiums had the, um, you know, no black people are allowed to live here. And if you buy, buy a house in that condominium, you have to sign that you can't sell your house to black people. And, you know, you could argue that black people lower property values, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not a racist, whatever. Uh, the Supreme Court did overrule that eventually. But the, the point is, even though I think that might have hurt the value of my property or would have, I would still argue for it because I believe it's, it's more important. Uh, than than my personal um, than my personal health and safety and all that stuff. Oh, I'm not a banding program. Um, okay. Um, and see, this is I think this is the problem. Uh, well, okay. If you would normally stay home for work, uh, that's great. Then you would be doing it anyway. It's not. There's the isolation has done nothing for you. Um, the only problem is you're not going to go back to work when you feel better. Um, so anyway, what the hell was I? Oh yeah. And again, like I said, this is, this is fine. Um, there's a lot of things in which I, I believe that, um, in, cause I believe freedom is a birthright and that sometimes means people doing things I don't like, uh, or even things that don't directly hurt me, but hurt me in some esoteric way. But I've got to say, you know, well, you can't really morally have the belief that you believe something if you only believe in the, that thing when it helps you. Um, God damn it. Um, um, yes, and actually I was going to make that point separately. This was actually... Um, This was actually this point here that I haven't gotten to yet. And by the way, I did misspell the word martial law because apparently uh, Senator Rubio sent out a tweet that spelled it like this. Here's what I'm worried about. I think right now the public health statues, let's see. Um, I believe the public health statues are being abused to create a state of near martial law. We are forcing, there's one, there's a difference between telling people you should stay home, giving advice that they should stay home, and forcing them to stay home, forcing people to close their businesses, uh, forcing people to do things for something that I don't think is that dangerous. So you've basically hurt a lot of people who, um, who want to maybe continue running their businesses. I think most people would just voluntarily stop because we, we've scared a lot of people. But what I'm saying is I don't think it's reasonable to force people to stay at home or to not congregate if they choose to do so because that is a violation of freedom and I don't think the uh, the coronavirus is serious enough to justify that. Um, more importantly than that, if you are somebody who's concerned with corona, you can stay at home. You can self-isolate. The people who are going out and hanging out with others, they're not hurting you. They're exercising their rights without violating yours. So. Um, no, I don't think it is. And I, I mean, this is coming from someone who literally has not left his house in freaking months. And honestly, almost thank you. Oh, cool. I'm getting a zero second delay. Nice. Uh, no, I, I don't, I can't make money off this for various reasons. Um, but see, this is coming from someone, I stay at home all the time. I literally have had groceries delivered, food delivered. I don't have to step outside my house. 
but I know there are people who feel uncomfortable having to stay home. They feel like they're trapped or whatever. And I know they can walk around and stuff, but there's a lot of people who, you know, they want to hang out with friends. Uh, and literally a two-person limit. I mean, that's that's kind of... I think even the Nazis allowed up to groups of up to three uh, meeting without previous permission. That's, that's too much. It's too much. Okay. Um... Um, yeah, and that's, yeah, um, and that's the other problem, of course. We have a lot of small businesses out there that cannot afford to take this loss. Um, and again, what I'm saying is if you look at the real threat, maybe, maybe it's not that big. Um, yeah, this is, this is, uh, yeah, this is just, I was going to almost name this basically, um, everyone has to have talk about the coronavirus, so I have to as well. Um... Well, I, no, no, and, and many of them won't. So you have to realize, this thing has scared a lot of people. I mean, even if the government didn't take any steps, there's a lot of people who would stay at home, uh, close their businesses, not hang out with others, and, and they have the right to do that. That's part of their freedom. Um, uh, exactly. Well, no, this is the other problem, though. See, <laughs> this is where I think Miglobite and I would disagree, you and I would disagree a lot. Um, I don't think people have a right to a job. I mean, most businesses are doing the right thing in saying you can self-isolate, you can work from home. Um, but if your job doesn't allow it, well, for one thing, your employer has to make a decision then. Um, if, you know, if 90% if of his employees are saying, uh, you either let us work from home or we're not going to work, the employer himself might say, well, geez, I can't afford to have 90% of my workforce gone. I mean, I could hire scabs or something, but you know, in the long in the long run, if you have any sort of a, 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 a educated workforce, you can't let ninety percent of them go. That's just not going to work. Um, no, I don't think it is. That's the, that's what I'm. Um, uh, well, okay, and, and and if you're a contractor, this is bad too, and unfortunately to me. And I know people don't like this, but that's kind of a decision you have to make. And this is where you might want to get together with unions. Um, yeah, and I, I think, Megalobite, we, we talked about this in some other contexts as well. Um, I view a job, despite what the Labor Department thinks, as a contract. And if you have in your contract, you know, uh, this sort of taking care of sick leave, taking care of parents' leave, then that's something you have in your contract. If you don't have that, um, and, and many people, many contractors, when I was a contractor, I didn't have, I got paid more, um, but I didn't get any vacation days or sick leave or anything. I, when I took the day off, I didn't get paid, basically. Um, but that was all sort of, you know, rolled into my, into my uh, amount that I charged. Um, and and that's, that's the thing where I'm, you know, I, I seem like I don't seem very sympathetic to these people what I'm saying is you can't a lot of people see business owners as the bad guys as though they have unlimited money um, you know they can afford to pay people not to work uh, or if they think that working at home is less efficient I'm still not going to Pomodoro um, I'm getting too getting too worked up um, and, and and that seems cruel but I, but I, you have to realize business owners uh, also are going to suffer from this. This is, uh, you can't really, and you know, some people are fine with others working at home, but some business owners believe for whatever reason that when you work at home, you're not as efficient. That's their personal view. So to them, letting people work from home, they're losing, they're losing some degree of work. Right. And that's the problem. And that's, I don't think, yeah, this is, this is, again, like I saying, this is where people seem to attack large businesses. Um, and the problem for me with attacking large businesses is those same arguments can be used against small businesses. You're sort of penalizing the business from having become successful. Um, you know, I, if I, if I want to hire someone, I want to do it under certain terms. Uh, and I could see where larger businesses would want to do it under certain terms as well. And this is capital. I mean, this is.
capitalism and base uh, what I would say, what I call basic rights, which is you're going to make the best contract you can, and obviously um, you're going to want to give yourself as much power in that contract as possible. So when something like this happens, you have the right to be generous to your employees, but you don't want to be forced to suddenly pay, be you know be paying out money for a for some you know for a virus i mean you have your expenses too um yeah and that's 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 what i'm saying here milka strimu i think people tend to say that big businesses are evil because they're big and what i'm saying is they deserve the same fair treatment as small businesses um and you might you know and people disagree with that and people think there's you know if you think there's too many big businesses let me tell you what you should do um, and this is again a controversial suggestion a lot of people are rich because of the stock they own and if you own a share of a company you don't own a piece of that company you own for the most part a voting share okay um, okay 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 um, okay okay so you're saying that uh, that that's actually true um, where the hell was I making my... Right, that's what I was saying. I was saying that I don't feel bad for companies. I mean, I don't think companies are evil for laying people off if they have to, although I also think it's a bad de decision for the company itself. Um, mm, see, what do you mean by evil actions, though? Um, well, sick leave, there is mandatory sick leave in some places, uh, but that would be government jobs. But you're right, yeah. Um, but, it, but the point I was trying to make, I think, is um, people are really nailing big businesses. Um, well, um, I, I don't. I don't know if Walmart has it. Well, Walmart might actually have sick leave, but let's let's pretend that they don't. Okay, but wait, let's go back to the the, the small guy. Um, suppose. You know, you're a mom and pop shop, and you're paying some guy to stock the shelves, um, and he is going. You know, he's not going to do it. He's sick, and he's not going to do it. Are you still going to pay him? I mean, that's money coming out of your pocket to pay him for not working. And I think the only reason uh, people think it's different is because it's a large company, and I just don't see a. I just don't see a precedent or a reason we should treat large companies or rich people more unfairly than we treat small people, small businesses. Um, yeah, and that's, that's where you're going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. They have, they have lots of money, and that's, that's where socialism comes in. People who have lots of money should be helping people who have less money. But that, to me, is not... And that's, see, okay, good. I'm glad. Milkister Moo and Isooptilator, I think you can just take each other on there. Um, and that's, that's, what I, that's what I see. I don't see socialism because I believe in property rights. I see that for the most part, you know, if, if people make money and they're not cheating anyone doing it, it's their money to do with what they want. And they're going to also want to make as much money as possible. They're not going to want to pay people for not working. Um... Well, okay, but that's, again, well, because, I mean, first of all, this is good. I could go for days on this one. Okay, first of all, let me, let me just, um, first of all, let's just look at this, um, Okay, so this is clearly someone who's going to uh, argue my case. The rich do not pay fewer taxes than you do, at least if you look at the total amount. Um, um, okay. If you believe that they're, they're quoting correctly, top 10% of income earners pay 70% of the federal income taxes. So if you're not in that top 10%, you're being subsidized by this top 10%. 
Um, yeah, see, and this is this is, and many keep in mind that many companies are doing this. I mean, DoorDash is doing this. A lot of the well, the companies I know are delivery companies, but a lot of people are doing this. What I'm saying is. I don't see a legal obligation to do this. And I, and I very strongly encourage charity. I'm a big believer in capitalism with charity, not socialism, not being forced to give your money to someone, but voluntarily doing so. What do you mean that's a stupid statistic? That literally means that they're paying. OK, look, one way to pay taxes would be if everyone paid for the services they received. Uh, wow. Well, well, what I'm saying is if you believe in the capitalists, if you believe in people own money, um, boom, milk is true moo. This is great. Maybe I'll just sit back and, and watch this. Um, but they're not. They're not. They have to pay their, they have to pay their lighting bill. They have to pay for renting buildings. They have to, um, they have to pay their employees. They're not getting stuff for free. Uh, what, what public resources are they getting that they're not paying for? They don't get free lights or free electricity or free anything. I know, isn't it? I know, isn't it great just uh, just to watch when two people in your stream get really involved on on other sides? Um, that's, but it is personal. I mean, that's that's the whole point of money, though. Um, I mean, you're, you're pushing it to the limit there. But what I'm saying is you decide who you want to help. Uh, I mean, and, that, and that's one of the problems, I think, with government charity. Government has an obligation to treat people equally, and I'm totally good with that. But that means they probably shouldn't be the ones running welfare. Uh, the people, you know. Um, OK. And that is a good argument there. They wreck the roads 10 times faster. And that is why they actually need apportioned license plates. Um, and if we did that, if we actually went with that sort of pay for the taxes for the things you use, I would be okay with that system. I just don't think that the uh, rich people are using services at that much higher of a rate that they should be subsidizing the rest of us. And I agree with you. Thank you for Amazon Prime. Everyone should be nice to each other. Um, and I guess that's my problem with things like free health care or free education. It's not really free. Right? Someone has to pay for it at some point. So whose money are you taking? Uh, and why isn't it your own? Why isn't it your own money? You know, um, and this is a very crude way of saying it, but you breed them, you feed them. If you're going to have children and you don't think you're going to be able to afford to raise them, you probably shouldn't be having those children. Um, that's that's kind of a. Uh, I mean, are you saying that like when? Um, well, it's tax money, but tax the tax money still comes from somewhere. Um, okay, but I bet you they would be happy not to. I would bet you anything that they, the companies would love to run their own schools. Uh, and this might actually become ugly, but, um, but see, this is bad. Okay, so now, now you're what you're, what you're telling, what you're, okay. What I'm saying is I don't believe in public education. I don't believe in public health care. So what I'm saying is we need to take those things back, and then companies probably would pay for some level of tr education or training just to get the workers they need. I think you're sort of arguing that three wrongs make a right. Um, uh, okay, I, I'll, I guess that statement by Milka Stramu is, um, uh, not necessarily, but I certainly don't want the government running our schools. I believe our public education system is beyond terrible, literally almost, <coughs> excuse me, coronavirus, no, I'm just kidding. Um. I mean, right now, I would say that probably 90 to 99 percent of what kids learn in school is never useful to them. Um, when's the last time, and don't ask me this question, when's the last time you used calculus or trigonometry in your job? Don't ask me, because I, I love that stuff. But I mean, 
Well, sure. And they, and they probably, well, they couldn't have their own town. There's still some basic, I believe the government still has a responsibility to preserve some basic rights. Um, and the other big problem is, okay, I know, I didn't. I just, uh, I just coughed into the microphone. You're all going to get the virus now. Um, I am, but again, how many people working in their jobs? To be honest, I've never used calculus in a job except when I'm teaching math. So that's just like a, a virus that breeds itself. Um, and they could, and the way to defeat companies, the way to defeat companies is right now the American public, <laughs> I didn't say we didn't need it, we need it, but most people don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, really, you solve integrals and differentials to do machining. I mean, I, I just, I thought the, the machines had settings and stuff. I don't think you're actually integrating and differentiating and doing all that stuff. I mean, maybe the machine was designed in such a, you know, with that in mind, but, uh, but woodworking, well, I, I probably just insulted some people. Um, I just, I just don't see that. Uh, plus, the other, the other big point is, of course, I mean, when's the last time you learned the, the structure of a butterfly or, you know, what ants, um, what I'm saying is most of that information you could get when you needed it. Um, the original point about this was, um, I don't think, I think people should pay the taxes for the services they use. Um, okay, wait. I'm saying that our current school system is very defective. Uh, most of what you learn is useless. The way you learn it is useless. The, um, the, uh, the spending, you know, six hours a day um, imprisoned in the school is not useful. Um, now, what I'm saying, let's say that we didn't pay taxes for school. That money would still exist. So now parents could go and form, um, form schools of their own, you know, with people they actually trust who have the same values. And it's, it's, some people say, you know, homeschooling is not good. This wouldn't necessarily be homeschooling. It would be you find the people that you feel comfortable with to teach your children, not public school teachers uh, who, you know, uh, not, not, not the state. And the other point I was making is if companies didn't have publicly educated employees, they would probably run training programs because they do need to, uh, they do need to hire employees. But like I said, the other prop part is that to defeat the companies, stop buying stocks. The stocks are not worth the amount you, the average person, pays for them. And th the stock value goes down, the rich people get poorer, and eventually uh, the stock market is a big scam. You're only buying voting shares, and if somebody else has the majority of the stock, you really can't do anything about it. Um, Ooh, well, I don't want my parents... Well, that's kind of a... That's a different issue, but let's get into that. And that's what I'm saying. And that's too bad. I mean, you're right, but how do you solve that problem? If you have a disabled child, how am I responsible for that? Who is who is supposed to pay for that and why? Um, uh, Miglavite, I don't think you're making a great point because uh, if you were a porn star... You would probably be making a lot more money, and and a lot of it would be coming from me, because uh, you are very beautiful, and I would totally support you becoming a porn star. So that that really, I think, a lot of your viewers would be like, no, that's that's a bad thing. That would have been better if she was. Um, but that gets into another question of, um, <laughs> um, yeah, you could. You could. Um, I think I mentioned I'm actually helping another streamer set something like that up. Uh, but, but we won't get into that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get back. We'll get... Uh, I guess, Minglebite, you were saying about your parents. Um, at some point, you have to decide, you, you know, and you're right. How do we treat children in... <laughs> I can't tell if you're being sarcastic, Milk is Move, but that is... Uh, that's hilarious. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, darn, we've lost ISO after later. Um, what I was going to say is, 
you kind of have to decide how do children make decisions? Um, what, you know, how do we decide what children want? I mean, clearly, clearly the idea is young children don't have the maturity to make their own decisions. I accept that. I believe that um, it's the parents, most parents want to make the best decisions for their children and they have the right to make the decisions for their children. Because I just don't see anybody else who could be making those decisions for their children. Uh, children are not property, but I, I do see that the parent has a both a, uh, a responsibility uh, and a right to raise their children, which means they do make you know, decisions for their children except when it crosses the line into abuse. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, if God does watch us when we're watching porn, it's like he's getting a double show. He gets to watch us while we're watching the porn. And then, and that's a good question. Where do you draw the line for abuse? Um, see, I just don't, I just, I think most parents do want what's best for their children. I just don't think that they have... <laughs> um, and, and that's a good question I saw up later. What constitutes child abuse? I don't think choosing what subjects your child learns necessarily constitutes child abuse. Uh, if you decide that your child is going to go into a field and, and you raise them that way, at some point they, they can make their own decisions. But I don't see that that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, uh, apprenticing was a, a big part of America in you know the previous centuries, um, and it, and it and it worked. Uh, I, I again set sense you're being sarcastic, um, uh, because what about uh, using the restroom? Milk is true. I mean, does he watch that? I, I get the feeling that though that you're joking. Um, so that that's where I come in with parents saying that I think parents. Um, yeah, and I agree with you there, sort of, but the, the point is, because the alternative to that is we decide that every child needs to learn the same thing in the same way at the same time, which is literally what our school system is. Everyone's going to learn this much biology, everyone's going to learn this much of this. Um, I just think that, uh, that uh, we lose individuality there when that happens. So and at some point, I do believe that children, and I don't mean when they turn 18, that's just an arbitrary number, but they do have the right to make their own decisions. Um, so, you know, I mean, they, they might not get sex education from their parents, but once they are um, mature enough, they're certainly free to learn it on their own. And I, the problem is you can get into so deep into this, um, uh, okay, tell me what those Montessori schools are. I, I don't think I know what they are, uh, but um, and, and this is an issue, I agree, but the problem is if we don't let parents decide what their children l learn, um, who does decide, and that sort of becomes a problem then because that means society is enforcing a view upon, the society is saying, your children are going to learn this, which means eventually we're still not going to Pomodoro. I'm just way too active for right now, way too spittily right now. Um, who does decide? And if we do have like the you know government decide, then everyone's going to become kind of the same. And I and I and I don't see that there is a perfect moral system that everyone should be forced to follow. Um, okay, now we're getting. Okay, okay, now I'm falling behind. Uh, now I know how you feel, Miglobite. Um Give everyone five minutes worth of attention, but you'll fall behind. Okay, and I'm sorry, that is, that is personal, though. Let me ask you a question, though, I saw up to later that you may not want to uh, answer. When your parents gave birth to you, or wh you know, when they conceived you, uh, were they, did they believe they had the, uh, the money to raise a child, because it does take money to raise a child. Um, <laughs> okay, and, and here's the, here's my point, Megalobite. Um, 
I'm going to say something that people are not going to like a lot of, but um, there's something called the GED. A lot of people know about it, the graduate equivalency degree. You can study for the GED in six weeks. Six weeks, you can take the GED test, pass it. What that tells me is that 12 years you spend ed in education, aside from teaching you to follow the rules and do stupid things and be in prison for six hours a day, teaches you n almost nothing. So even if these kids grow up and they don't know anything, six weeks, they have the equivalent of a high school diploma. And so it doesn't bother me that these, uh, and you know, and some, some kids really are exceptional um, and you do have to let them follow their passion. Okay, and so what you're saying now is um, a special case. And that will happen. There will be people who will think, I can afford to have a child, I'm well enough off, I can afford to feed and educate this child, and then something goes wrong. And in my utopia, which is not really a utopia, um, there would be charities that would help you. Or, you know, maybe your father would have bought insurance, although that's kind of a hard thing to buy. Um, so I see yours as a special case. Uh, I mean, I'm going to sound a lot like Donald Trump now, uh, but I think a lot of people who have children, well, okay, now wait a minute. Most, you're right, most businesses do fail, but they don't usually have a period of doing well first. Businesses that fail usually start off clunky, stay clunky, and then close because the guy can't make a living out of it. Um, so, in fact, I think if you're going to get, like, statistic -y on me, uh, I think that most businesses that last for over two years, though, uh, don't fail. The failures come in fairly early. Um, I think they would have sympathy for a... Uh, it's not the rich. Remember, all this money that we're not spending on schools, all this money we're not spending on welfare, is going to the average income-earning American. The money doesn't disappear. This just means everyone gets a little bit richer. Let's, well, yeah, and, and I would agree with that. Partly because when the government is giving uh, other people, that's my, still my money. I mean, they're taking it and they're giving it to them. Uh, so, you know, I have less left over to, to donate to charity. Okay, let's see. Okay, Migla. <laughs> um, okay, 50, okay. And, and that, that's correct. So what I'm trying to say, though, is if a business has lasted for a certain amount of time um, it becomes less likely to fail as it as it becomes as it goes on um, but you're saying 50% so you're saying that 30% fail between year one and five that's not good um, uh, how does that relate now oh I see what you're saying no, what I'm saying though is uh, basically imagine the average income American earning American paying a lot less in taxes. That's what I'm saying. Not necessarily, because if you get more income, you have more disposable income. Money's still there. It doesn't go away. It's just that now the money that went to public education, parents get to decide how to spend it on their children. It's like a voucher system, but instead of getting all complicated with vouchers, we just give them the money. We say, here's the money. You do what's best for your child. Welfare, here's the money. You give it to the people you feel deserve it. And, and, and you know, someone who had a successful business and, you know, was going to raise a child and then um, failed, I would see that as a sympathetic person, as opposed to someone who already had a lot of children, wasn't really being able to raise them properly, was already on welfare, and had more children. Yeah, I think I have to agree with Mokistermu. I think there's a lot of uh, people that just think because they're rich, they're bad people. Um, and some, ri some, some rich people are bad. Some poor people are bad. Um, a lot of people who are, you know, there's a, big, there's a big crime problem in Albuquerque right now. And a lot of the people who are stealing, uh, you know, are, are fairly poor people because, you know, that's, they're the ones who need the money. And so the issue there is... Um, and, and the people are very angry at them. No one is saying that, oh, you know, they're poor, so it's okay that they steal. They're very, very unhappy about uh, these poor people. Okay, thank you very much, Miglobite, for showing up. Uh, and I really appreciate you bringing all your wonderful followers here. 
Um, okay. Right. But here's the problem I saw after later. It's not really the government, right? You're taking somebody else's money for that. Okay, I'm going to mute the stream for one second if I remember how to blow my nose because I am now getting all congested. Hopefully that worked. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, um, yeah, last time I actually screwed up and you did hear it. Uh, I mean, it wasn't great or anything, but kind of weird. Um, okay, I swapped. Let, let, let me ask this question. Um, this is a very ugly question to ask. Um, when... When someone has a child, uh, two people, whatever, uh, this isn't a democracy, this is a republic. I mean, I know people like to think it's a democracy, but it's very clearly a republic. Well, that, okay, so I mean, that, that would be a very socialist argument. Um, so in other words, you don't believe in capitalism then, which, which is fine, a lot, some people don't. Um, and, and to me, this, is, this actually is where you have to get sort of fundamental with it. I believe people have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's in the preamble to the Declaration of the Independence. Um, well, okay, our elective... Technically, that's not even correct. It's, uh, our elective representatives are supposed to uphold the Constitution. Um, so technically, even if you elect a representative who says, I'll do something unconstitutional, they're not legally allowed to do it. I mean, our system is screwed up beyond belief right now. Um, but from a legal perspective, we are a republic, and we do have laws. Um, okay, you don't believe capitalism is the best solution to some problems. But let me ask this. Um, do you believe people have a right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Those three things. Um, yeah, they do, you're correct, but I mean, that happens very rarely. Uh, you're correct about that, but that's kind of not what you're talking about. You're talking about when we elect, like, you know, we have two candidates, one says they'll do this, the other says they'll do this. One of the things they want to do is clearly you know, not constitutional, but they do it anyway. Uh, but yes, I mean, yes, you're right. We could, we could also change the Constitution. And that's a much bigger change, though. Okay. Um, okay, no, good. Yes, absolutely. That is, the, that is the premise of libertarianism, is that you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, provided you do not infringe upon other people's life, liberty, or right to happiness. Uh, okay, so now do you believe in the c concept of property rights? Do you believe people can own land or own property, physical property? And by the way, while you're answering that, I will point out there is no right to medical care in that statement. There is no right to welfare. Uh, the pursuit of happiness does not mean happiness. Uh, life and liberty, two things. Um, okay, so you don't believe in the concept of property rights. And that's a very legitimate statement because when you start to think about it, why do we actually legally own our property? Well, yeah, that's, that, 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 that's a problem. But I mean, I, I'm going I'm to actually defend not having property rights. Uh, because that is a very big problem with, um, that's a very big difference between libertarianism and socialism is whether the concept of property rights exist. Well, I own my property because I bought it from the guy who owned it before me, who bought it from the guy who owned it before me, blah, blah, blah. At some point going back to where the United States purchased it from France as part of the Louisiana Purchase. So far, so good. Everyone's buying property. Um, 
How did France get that property, though? What's their legal status of getting that property? Well, they basically killed or imprisoned or whatever the people who were living there. That's not cool. That's not, that doesn't seem like my right to this property ultimately comes from them killing people. Exactly. That's the problem. But let's go... St I'm going to get even worse about this. I'm going to really, really fire it up. What gave the natives the right to that property? Do you own property because you're the first person who sees it? Do you own property because you farm on it? Do you own property because... I mean, what was their right to that? What was their claim to that property? I mean, how does anyone have any claim to property? So how, do you, how would you allocate property rights I so opt to litter later. And by the way, if you want, I should have made this offer earlier. If you want, you can come into Discord and we can, uh, we can get you set up as a, as a voice on this chat as well. But yes, that was my point. Um, yeah, no, you're right. I, Bill Gistermu, when you start to say that property rights don't exist, you have to think in a totally different way. I mean, you totally lose out on my, I have a fundamental belief in property rights, but I agree. Uh, and if you take that away, though, everything changes. Because then technically, wherever you're standing, you don't own the place that you're standing. So that kind of gets rid of all civil rights as well. Um, okay, okay, group rights. Uh, so you're basically saying like a democracy that we decide as it, which we don't have here, that we have a democracy decide who owns, uh, who owns land. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? And but while you answer, I think I'm about to go into the evils of democracy pretty quickly. Um, democracy has a lot of problems, but I'll wait till you say yes so I can... So I, I'm not I'm not pre I'm not jumping the gun here, because um, you did talk about democracy earlier. Um, okay, I think maybe I scared you now from. Oh yeah, I have a Discord chat. Let me. Let's see if we can freaking find it. Well, okay, actually, I meant you could chat with me in Discord because you don't. We don't even need like a room for that. Just one to one. Um, if more than one pe person, then yes. But I do have a Discord chat. Don't go there. It sucks. Okay, okay. Oh, that's that's an interesting way of uh, kind of dodging the question there. Okay, give me an example of what you mean by a group decision making process, because to me, that is democracy. I mean, it could be a representative democracy, but it's still democracy. And for those of you who are watching the stream on YouTube and wondering what the hell happened to my coronavirus argument, yeah, all of my streams are, are mislabeled. So at the beginning of this stream, there was some coronavirus stuff. We've now moved on to, I think, the uh, concept of property rights. Um, fortunately, no one watches my streams on YouTube, so I think I'm pretty safe there. So, group decision-making methods. Uh, to me, that oh, okay. Let's let's see what you say. Give me give me an example of some group decision-making methods that aren't effectively democracies. Okay, and are you saying there should be an equal amount of decision-making power? Okay, votes are not the only way to do it. But I guess, are you saying there should be an equal amount of decision-making power for each citizen? Ultimately, are you saying that what the group, what the majority of people feel, plurality, of, well, whatever, however you do it, but it's mostly each person has an equal say in what happens. And yes, I am leading you into a trap.
Come on, enter the trap. <laughs> I'm I'm an impatient spider. And there you go. Some people think uh, socialism is a bad idea. Here we go. Established and difficult. Okay. Interesting. Uh, that's kind of what we have here in this republic, but... Um, uh, okay, so I guess my question would be, if you're going to have like a system um, that makes it difficult to change things, what is your base system going to be? Who makes the initial decisions for what happens? That the decisions that are difficult to change. Do the people decide those in general? Or, or are those decided by some other method? And then citizens have to kind of do a difficult process to change them. Uh, what I'm saying here, by, by the way, in general is ultimate, okay, let's see, if it, ultimately, are you saying that if the majority of people believed in something, they could make that thing law? Because ultimately through their representatives, through the difficult way of changing things, whatever method it is, is it ultimately majority rule? <laughs> okay, that's that's interesting. Um, so, which decisions would be made which way? And before I even ask that question, when we start the whole country or whatever it is that we're starting, what are the initial decisions that are made? If the vast majority believed in it for an extended time, yes. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Um. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just smack down democracy a little bit now. The problem is a lot of people in the United States um, used to believe that black and white people shouldn't marry. That's called uh, miscegenation, and they were opposed to it. Or that you know people shouldn't be gay, or they shouldn't be allowed to have gay sex or whatever. Sodomy should be illegal. The problem is a lot of these things that the uh, majority opposed were fell under the category no I'm asking you not completely I'm just asking you basically what your premises would be and I'm saying that your premises are flawed because they depend on democracy and ultimately even if the majority of people think for example uh, homosexual sex is wrong I would say that there is a fundamental birthright that is a freedom that we have to do that. And that's why I'm saying no democracy in the world should be able to take away you know, your basic right to do something if you're not hurting somebody else. So consensual homosexual sex would be fine. Uh, Non-consensual would still be icky. And I'm going to ignore the uh, pom Pomodoro again. Okay, well... <sighs> Well, that's a good question, and that, that is a good question. And like I said, I fundamentally believe that people have the right to do what they want, provided they don't harm others. And now you could go, so, well, what do you mean by harm others or, or violate other people's rights? Um, but I'm going to answer you in a way that you're not going to like. The preamble to the Declaration says, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm happy with the current system. I'm just saying that I'm not happy with a democratic system either. The preamble to the Declaration of Independence says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That, that's an axiomatic system. They're not going to explain why these truths are self-evident. They're just saying, we just, we just think everyone sees them. Uh, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with the inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So that's my belief as well. This is not something that is open for people to discuss. It is a fundamental, fundamental right that is just a basic birthright. And I can't defend it in the same way that the Founding Fathers chose to say that it's self-evident. 
And I think that democracy doesn't do that. Um, democracy does not give people freedom all the time. I mean, there was a time that the majority of people, um, the vast majority of people opposed gay marriage. But now, the, and, and you know, and, and there will be people who will uh, oppose talking about gay marriage. Free speech would not exist with a democracy. People would be, the majority would say, well, we don't want to even hear about why it's a good thing. So not only would you not have gay marriage, you would not, never even have the chance to change people's minds about it because you wouldn't be allowed to speak about it. So way, way worse than, uh, democracy would be way, way worse because you get a group of people who are the majority and they, they want to control the minority. They don't want to be equal with the minority. They want benefits for their belief system over the other belief system. And that's why I think we, um, um, that's why I think that democracy is not a good method of government. And now I will be talking against uh, mom and apple pie um, and maybe baseball, although baseball is really boring. So I think baseball already not a great American pastime. Technically, they don't say America, it's an American sport, it's a pastime. And basically you sit there and watch it and time passes. So uh, yeah, football is a good, good American, and, and I mean real football, not European football. Well, like I said, that is, that is my better, me better method is uh, freedom is a birthright. People have the freedom to do what they want. They have property rights. Um, and, and, and the freedom means that you have the right to own, well, okay. You could maybe have the concept of freedom without property rights, but it would be very ugly. And then you have the right to own stuff and you have the right to decide what you do with the stuff you own. I mean, economics is about the study of allocating scarce resources. Yep. The majority of people in, to be fair, in Germany. I don't think the I don't think the people in Africa were uh, were supporting that uh, that point of view at that point. Um, but yeah, and, and and you know that does happen. And even even in the United States, I mean, um, there was a time when the majority of people felt that black people were like they should be slaves. That was actually okay for that. Slavery was okay. Um, so what I'm saying is, is this sort of democracy thing is not a good idea because it assumes that everybody is intelligent and uh, and supports freedom. And this is the United States where it would actually be closer to the truth to say that no one supports, no one's intelligent or supports freedom. I'm not saying that everyone's stupid, but we're closer to that truth than we are to the other one. Um, actually, it is. It's the libertarian method of government. The job of government, the job of government is to protect our rights. So there still is a government, and its only job is to protect our rights, to protect our rights to, um, well, libertarianism. That's what that's what I'm proposing. This is what um, there's always a libertarian candidate running. Uh, Gary Johnson, who used to be the governor of our state, ran as a libertarian candidate. Um, it's bad that I don't know who the current libertarian candidate is, but they're not going to win. Um, who should be the... Well, that's always a question. That's always going to be a question, though. Um, well, and here's where I would say that I don't think... Okay, now, now we're going to get tough with this. I don't think there really is, I mean, I know the Supreme Court interprets our laws, but I think they do a terrible, you actually met Gary Johnson? Cool. I've never met him. He was the governor. Um, and I know our Supreme Court interprets laws, but some of their interpretations are totally ridiculous. Um, so I think that there is, um, there is a natural and basic interpretation to the concept of rights. Um, your right to life does not mean you can jump off a cliff and force someone to save you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that, you know, honestly, that was not such a big deal. If you were president, what I would want as president is for someone to tell me what's happening and then I'd make a decision on it. Not that I have to know everything, but sort of understand, ideally, actually, I would have two people with very different views argue it, 
uh, because hearing the facts from two different sides can sometimes help you decide what, what belief side you're on. Um, his, he's pro-net neutrality, right? I mean, he's, he believes that companies should be forced to, uh, to uh, give equal bandwidth to everyone. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I get worked up, man. Um, and actually, uh, in a capitalist system, I would agree with you. Uh, companies have the right to decide um, how to, how to, you know, it's, it's their bandwidth. The only issue here might be that um, the infrastructure that, that they use was built when um, Bell Labs was a monopoly. In other words, when it was a government-controlled monopoly and the government had a lot to do with it. So it's possible some of that infrastructure belongs to the government uh, and they just rent it or something. Um, my solution to that, by the way, would be, I think we should be forming like, uh, you know, like credit unions for the internet. We should be, mm. oh. Oh, well, then I agree with Gary Johnson then. He's a, he's a good libertarian then. Um, well, I mean, it's their, it's their bandwidth. They can do what they want with it, right? It's their property. But I think that what the people can do is form like more of a credit union style internet service provider. Um, and even the threat of doing that might make companies back down a little bit. I mean, because we collectively have a lot of money. We know that because, you know, you go to sites like Kickstarter or uh, oh, the other one, I can't remember what the name was. Um, we have collectively the money to create an internet service provider that's bigger and better than Xfinity, or I guess Comcast is the company name. Um, that is another thing. That is another thing. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, they're not going to be happy. Oh, well, that, that is a solved problem. Um, nonprofit organizations have to deal with it. Um, credit unions have to deal with it. Credit union... Okay, now I see what you're going to try. You're going to try to trick me, aren't you? Um... Credit unions, I was going to say, is are owned by the people, but then you're going to say, well, that's just a democracy. But in, in the case of owning a company, true democracy, uh, that would be better than, that's different from government. Um, but actually what happens is you basically have a charter of principles uh, that the credit union or the charity will have, uh, 401c, uh, uh, and, the, and the principles are legally enforceable. Uh, actually, they, well, they do. Um, well, actually, they don't. The person who starts it gets to decide who the board of directors is. Um, but there are, you can have a credit union or a, or a nonprofit that has a legally enforceable set of rules. This is what this charity does. And in fact, if you don't follow those rules, you, it, well, it, currently the only bad thing that can happen is the IRS will tax you on the money you make because you no longer qualified uh, for that um, you no longer qualify uh, for being a nonprofit because you're not living up to your morals. Um, can they amend those principles through democracy? Probably not. They can always decide to start start a new, you know, ISP or organization with new principles, which is fine, but they would have to legally abandon that structure. Um, but I still think that. Um, I, I see it doesn't okay here's I guess here's what I'm saying to form a credit union ISP we do not need the majority of people uh, we you know and if you're competing with Comcast or whatever you would obviously want people who are not happy with whatever Comcast is doing but you would 20% of the population could do that there's no majority there I mean it's a majority of the 20% but I mean that's different so so that would be my financial way of getting around net neutrality. Um, okay, okay, but I mean, you could have, you could have a principle that says you can't amend the principles as well. Um, but you're right; most most charters do allow you to amend under certain conditions. And I think that your example of democracy is a little bit different. And actually, I'm not sure you would. If like, what if you had a child who was allergic to something, but the other five people in your house wanted to eat that thing? I think you use more than democracy, but I also think you're just you're just teasing me right now, which is fine. Um, but I guess I guess what I'm saying is that our 
our response to bad companies, well, they can never be changed, but at the same time, you're free to leave the association, right? I mean, you can abandon the company until there's literally no money in it, so that that's not as big of a deal as it seems to be. Um, oh, you bastard, you. Um, but, but I, so I guess what I'm saying is the solution to big companies doing things is not to get rid of big companies or to get rid of capitalism, but rather to fight. Hello, Natalo, I remember you from somewhere. And I think I know where I remember you from. Um, but I, but I, but I got to pretend I don't because I'm really bad with memory. And, and that was because before 2015, we had um, internet service providers were regulated as a utility, which is, which is different. There's something called a common carrier exception. Common carrier in telecommunications. And they have different rules. Um, and now they're not regulated as a common carrier anymore. Okay, good. Thank you. I love you. I love you, Natalo. Um, Um, well, partly because the, uh, the FCC's new director said he was going to regulate um, Internet service providers as, uh, as, you know, common carriers, basically. The idea behind a common carrier is, um, okay. Well, okay, I'm going to claim, oh, wow. Yeah, that is both correct. And I'm ignoring the bot today. And the place is actually, well, it is actually pretty nice today. I think. I haven't looked outside yet. Um... Milk is terminal. I think the the problem with that is though it was they were actually regulated as a common carrier. There there was actually a legal. It's like the phone company is a uh, telephone service was or is regulated under this uh, Telecommunications Act of 1934. Um. So they were probably legally required to provide indiscriminate public access until that. I don't remember his name, but the. Uh, the FCC guy said, we're not going to enforce it that way anymore. Um, uh, I don't think that's a good analogy there. Um, now, the, the, I mean, the concept behind, beyond, behind the, there's two ways to look at a common carrier. One way to look at a common carrier is if you use a telephone to make a threat or do something illegal, the phone company is not responsible. And they can wash their hands of that responsibility by saying, we're a common carrier. We only transmit messages. We don't look at the messages. We don't filter the messages. We don't decide who, what messages get sent. Um, so that would be one way of looking at a common carrier, um, which would say, you know, and so, and then they wouldn't be able to favor anyone because that would be, then you get into the concept of publishing. Um, so I don't think net neutrality is forcing companies, private, forcing private industry to do something they don't want to do, unless it, it actually, you know, it actually, they can't do anything illegal. They can't commit fraud. Um, they can't, you know, threaten people, could commit assault. But aside from that, we should fight uh, big companies with... Wow, okay. I don't know how we got into this crowbar head headlight metaphor, but okay, let's go with it. Um, so what I'm saying is basically, um, I think we should fight capitalism with capitalism. We've made the very big mistake of buying into the stock market, which means we are giving our money to these big companies while at the same time saying how unhappy we are with them. I mean, if you own a mutual fund right now, there's a good chance that some of somebody's, you know, that you own stock in Comcast. And, and um, well, sorry, if you own an index fund or, you know, a, a broad, broad spectrum mutual fund. Um, so take that money away. Um, you know, um, maybe 
insists that companies create a new kind of share that gives you more rights than the current share, which gives you very little for what your money. Uh, it's a scam. I mean, the only thing it really gives you is if the stock goes up, you make money. But in terms of ownership of the company, you got nothing. Um, bye, Isolopter. Good seeing you again. Hope that you don't die of the coronavirus, or if you do, that you get me a message so I can come watch you die, which would be fun. Okay. Um, have I have I scared everybody away now? Maybe. Let's see how many people there are still in chat. Um, wow, still a couple of people here. Some of these I happen to know are like bots or something that uh, uh, that basically are basically in the channel to gather statistics. I will always be here for you. Yeah, not as comforting as you would think it would be. Okay, um, I think I have made my point. Oh, did I actually ever finish making my point about the coronavirus? Um, so my point was that a lot of people recover without going to the hospital. They don't show up in the statistics. Ex um, exponential growth is not sustainable. Extrapolating from given data is actually not statistically valid. So you can't just assume that's going to continue growing at the same rate. Oh yeah, and here I was going to insult some doctors. I mean, some people say, well, you should listen to the doctors because the doctors are the experts in medicine. Um, yeah, yeah, back to the actual original topic. And, and, and I, I can accept that doctors know more about medicine, but they don't know more about statistics. And if you're going to use statistics, you got to play by the rules of statistics. And I think a lot of people in the soft sciences they learn about you know how to use this software or how to use the normal distribution, but they either don't learn or they forget about the very basics of statistics. Uh, things like random samples, things like representative samples, because the people who have coronavirus who come to a hospital are not representative of the people who have coronavirus uh, who aren't who aren't symptomatic. I mean, that's a, it's only a very small portion of the people who get sick enough to go to a hospital. Um, so what I'm saying is that the, the problem here isn't necessarily that doctors don't know medicine, but rather doctors are using numbers in ways they don't understand. They're, also, they're, they're missing a big um, chunk of people uh, that if they counted them, then the numbers would change. The, um, the same thing about, there's, you know, you might say, well, I've seen models that show if one person's infected, you know, everybody dies or whatever. And again, those models also ignore the people who get sick briefly and recover. They assume that everybody who gets infected will be counted in that uh, statistic of infected, but they won't be. They'll only be counted if they end up going to a hospital. Um, I think I talked about martial law, which I, and I'm worried that uh, the Constitution actually protects our right to assemble peaceably. Um, but apparently the public health statutes don't have to deal with that. It's like a back door. I mean, if someone actually, you know, if, if you know, someone tried to put down martial law, people would be like getting out their guns and stuff. But call it a public health statute, call it a public health emergency. Suddenly, you can take away people's rights, and they don't seem to, uh, they don't seem to mind. Um, okay, nope, we're still not going to do it. It's not going to walk. Okay, so I was hoping to create a really awesome stream that. Uh, that would be short enough that people could watch it and enjoy it and understand uh, a little bit more about why I think the uh, COVID-19 is, is not as big a threat as people are making it out to be, that there is, a, there is an over panic here and that it really may be no worse than the flu. Um, so this was fun. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it, we're getting close to two hours now. Uh, if people have questions, comments that are somewhat meaningful, I can answer them. Um, if not, I think I will kill the stream. The next stream will be very boring again, so please do not turn on notifications. You will be bored. Um, and I think in the next stream I might go back to the semantic wiki thing we were doing earlier, uh, which is somewhere. I don't know where it is anymore. Um, okay. I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'm going to put the whole thing on YouTube. I'm not going to cut it, though. Right now, my policy is to put everything... Yeah, I could. You're right. I could edit it. Um, right now, I'm just going to put... I think enough of the early talk is about 
COVID that if people get into it, they'll watch it. But again, I'm pretending like I have viewers, which I don't. Basically, what I do with all of these streams is I download them, upload them to YouTube, and just say to hell with it. Um, so next time, unless I find something else to babble on about incoherently, we will probably return to something very boring. Hello, hello, hello. You view, oh, you are wonderful. I love you. I keep forgetting who you are. I don't want to click on you right now because it will show up in stream. Um, but, uh, but I just, you're a wonderful person. Um, I think at one point you told me that you are actually a girl, so I'm allowed to say I love you and not feel gay. Although, I'll say I love you too, Mr. Milkister Moo. And I even love Isooctolate later, who is, uh, who has left apparently. Uh, who, who is in the city, by the way? Um, I love everybody. It's just the kind of person I am. Big hugs all around. Big group hug. Let's spread that virus out. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, no matter how you say that, that comes off as sarcasm. Oh, okay. Now, now we're just going. Uh, you mean you're, you mean you're standing up, right? Homo erectus, you're standing upright. Yeah, you're probably right. Without being, yeah, you're right. Without being physically or romantically or sexually attracted to them, uh, because basically everybody who loves me tells me they're not attracted to me. So I guess that's how that works. Uh, <laughs> okay. I know it's terrible. And it's not like I'm going to get anything while this virus thing is going on. Um, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of teasing. I, 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 I'm just being silly and saying um, that, that, that is part of my sort of self-deprecating personality thing. But we're not going to go there. Uh, Natalo, are you going to be streaming? If so, I can raid you with the uh, almost zero viewers that I have. Uh, yeah, um, um, I, you already know this, so I'm not going to say it, but of course, you, you do realize some of the people in New Mexico, many of the people in New Mexico, uh, were born with a good tan. That is, that's their actual skin color. <laughs> um, lots of Hispanics here. Um, but I think that's the, that's the joke you were going for. Um, racist. But that's okay. Okay, um, anybody have questions? Anybody, if, if you're going to stream Natalo, or anybody actually, um, let me know and I can raid your channel with the 10 people that I've got here, the 5 people I've got here. Uh, if not, we are now at, now I feel like I'm going to go over 2 hours now. So we're at 1 hour, 58 minutes, and 9 seconds. So I'm just going to whistle nonchalantly. Aha! So, oh my god. Well, I would be happy to help you while you're coding and streaming, more so than I would want to co stream myself. Um, it's good that you're using my stream as a distraction from getting work done. Um, I think I asked you once that too, and you... Something about uh, global warming. Oh, no. Screw that. You're looking for insect... Oh, that would be cool. Somebody else was talking about global warming, but screw that. Um, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, insect DNA in the air. Because you know how those insects are. They're always leaving their DNA behind, flying around. I never thought about it, but I guess we do that too. Because uh, we're always shedding cells. So, um, are you looking for the insect DNA in order to return it to the insects? Or are you going to, like, uh, you know, incubate them and create a new insect? And mix them together? Mix them with yourself and become, like, the fly? Um, what, what do you plan to do with this insect DNA? And should we, should we be concerned? Will there, will there be like a giant mutated insect attacking the nation once you are finished with your research?
And also, why are you sitting in front of a computer while you're looking for insect DNA in the air? Or are you looking at for insect DNA in the internal air? Which I guess that could happen too. That is interesting. Oh, that would be... So you're looking for insect DNA that is that can identify a specific individual insect. Is that correct? So that basically when you you could find that DNA again, you know it's the same insect. Do I work for NASA? No. I I, I know a lot about astronomy and I use a lot of NASA's tools, but I know I do not I do not work for NASA. Um, oh okay. So you're not you're not trying to track individuals, but, um, because the current methods, like you tie stuff around their legs, that's got to affect them. Um, um, yeah, I think he's asking because I've got a lot of I usually have a lot of NASA crap up, like this, like this, like this. This is technically not NASA crap, but it is astronomy. Lots of this bullshit. How much bullshit do I have here? Lots. Wow. Um, this yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot of stuff that has with astronomy, but no, I'm not. I'm not. I don't work for NASA. Um, do it, do it, do it, do it. This is the only time. Well, not the only time, but cool. BSCS, love me that. You know, computer science, I think I've said this like a billion times, but when I was growing up, computer science wasn't even a thing. It wasn't a field. Uh, it is essentially mathematics. I mean, if you're looking at it as a pure science, it's mathematics. You don't even really need a computer to do computer science. And Alan Turing, one of the most famous computer scientists, did a lot of his early work just as essays and papers. He didn't have a computer to work with. Uh, he created the Turing machine all as like sort of an abstract um, as an abstract thing, and that he and he only had it on paper. You just need a whiteboard, damn straight. It's purely mathematics. Um, the implementation on a computer is just like a second secondary thought. <laughs> um, I know there's a famous quote of Alan Turing once saying something like, uh, uh, "We would be able to factor numbers up to a hundred He said something that <coughs> I covered that one. Uh, saying something like, um, one day we'll be able to, you know, he was saying something like, uh, one day we'll have a computer that has over 10 states or something. Because the ones he was building had very few states, and, and at the time, people didn't realize how small computers would become. So, so Natalo, if you're going to sp spontaneously stream, I guess I can actually watch it from here, and then I can, I can come into it. Um... So let's see what's going on with Natalo here. Right now, she might be hosting me, which would be... Oh, he hosting Emma well. Well, well, well. I don't know who Emma Lasuski is, but clearly you like her more than you like me. All right, so we're going to have a stream coming in, and we will hang out till then. Uh, just like I made Miglobite hang out for several minutes while my stream was set up. And then Natalo, at the end of your stream, I think you should try to uh, find... Some we could just keep this, like, this turn going over forever. That would be really cool. A stream that never ends. Um, okay, so what the hell do I want to talk about now? Well, yeah, let's talk about what I won't be doing on the next stream, but I'm going to pretend that I'll be doing on the next stream. Uh, that is the semantic wiki, which I will bring up, because I actually kind of like that one. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, if I'm going to raid uh, Natalo, then everybody who's in here is going to go there which is what I plan to do. Then you can uh, get out if you want to, but by default you will go in. Um, so this is something I've been talking about before. This is a, a wiki I've created, but I'd like to automate the creation further. And as much as I... Oh, hang on. Is that a burger? That's a frog. Okay. Groovy. Uh-oh. Uh Click to unmute. No, I can't do that. It'll blow everything up. Uh, okay, so you're in. I'm gonna go ahead and now I don't have to. I've never done this before. How do I? How do I? How do I rate a streamer? 
I don't know what I'm doing. Wait. Help me! I assume someone here knows how to how to do it. Otherwise, I I can go Google it. I think I might have to actually be on my page to do that. So hang on. Um. Yeah, let me get let me get onto my page. Actually, I think you have to be in this dashboard live page to do something. Um. Cork cockroach cam is that cockroach cam? Okay, my stream is very ugly. Let's see if we can. Uh, oh, here we go. Um, do I not follow you for some reason? Oh my god. Hang on. That's terrible. Why don't I follow you? Terribleness in my soul has made me not follow you. Um, wait a minute. I am following you. Hello, Natalo. For people watching my stream, you're... Let's see. Oh, I know, but it's always fun. Plus, I want to know how to do it now. Why is this not... Does it not recognize that she's online? What am I doing wrong, Milky Stramu? Why am I not able to do this? She's none of these people. All right, screw it. I think I'm just going to go there. This is not cool, though. Um, I am following her, so I should be able to... I'll be there in a minute. I don't know if anyone's listening to me anymore. Uh, no. Okay, screw it. All right, thank you for watching the stream. The stream is going down. I'm going to go watch Natalo. You can, too, if you'd like. If there's anybody else left. 